Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the World Crypto Economic Forum brought to you by Celsius. Next up, we have Boris Pikoloff. He's going to be doing a presentation for us. He's the co-founder of Stobox, an award-winning technology and advisory company in the field of alternative business financing via securities tokenization. All about the securities tokens. Uh, that sounds good. I'll give you the mic. And uh, without further ado, Boris, please give us an education. Thank you, Titana, for inviting me. And it's actually great to see that there are so many speeches on this conference devoted to security tokens. And I'm glad to see that this trend is uh, getting on the second life and taking off. And this is, and I'm going to continue the sentiment of the previous speakers and discuss how security tokens and their match with decentralized finance are important in unlocking liquidity for the vast majority of companies. According to World Bank, there are around 150 million companies in the world. However, of them, only 600,000 are traded on any exchanges in the world. And the majority of all capital is focused primarily in those 600,000 companies, creating a huge disequilibrium and inequality in terms of how capital is distributed. So what I'm going to discuss in this presentation, firstly, I will focus on the importance of liquidity for investment attractiveness and why, and why is it a so crucial factor. Secondly, I will cover the importance of more equal access to capital and what it will mean for the world economy. And lastly, the most interesting and important part, how DeFi can be used to unlock and create this liquidity and more equal access to capital. So with that said, let's proceed to the first part on the importance of liquidity for investment attractiveness. This is quite straightforward. The, if you cannot exit an asset, most likely you won't be able to realize the profit of the investment because very few assets are able to deliver the profit from the operating income that is that high that it covers the cost of the investment and assets. Therefore, most assets due to their illiquidity are actually quite non-attractive to investors and face difficulty raising capital from anybody except venture funds or private equity funds and even them invest only in those companies who are fancy, exciting and can raise to uh, actually be ipo or sold at M&A, which is not the case about the big part of companies. And we can see it in valuation. We see that companies that have higher liquidity are valued at least 40% higher, up to 40% higher than companies that aren't liquid. So this is a big factor in investment attractiveness. Obviously, some companies can get also debt financing, but it's fairly inaccessible in developing world when banking system is underdeveloped and it is not available to companies without a sufficient amount of hard assets which again very limits this avenue of financing so overall access to equity investors is critically important for such businesses why it doesn't matter for the economy at all it matters because the value isn't created only by flashy big companies that are able to go to the IPO and attract capital. It is created by boring everyday companies that actually build our economy. It is created by the local coffee shop, by a small advertisement agency, by a mid-sized manufacturing company. All of these have limited access to private markets, but actually uh, to capital markets, but they are the ones that constitute the vast majority of the economy and the vast majority of uh, and create the vast majority of jobs and economic value. Notice that due to the smaller companies being less bureaucratic, having less layers of management, that is people telling others what to do instead of actually doing and creating value, because of them having less politics, being more agile and responsive to customers because simply being more dependent on customers, they tend to be, uh, to, they tend to create higher economic value and uh, waste less funds. So you can get higher economic growth by opening these companies to more capital. And we're speaking about tremendous amounts of inefficiency when capital is allocated to 0 .0 point, uh, to, to 0 0.01 percent of companies instead of majority of others so imagine the kind of economic growth we can get when we equal equalize this distribution of capital we can literally speak about uh, the gdp growth rising by several percentage points which is a huge increase by given standards when you have like two or three percent economic growth consider it normal so it can really make a difference in the quality of life but not only that 
not only the quality of life, but also the economic equality. Because when you get more capital to smaller companies, not only big corporates and their founders get rich, but also you get more possibility to earn money for small businesses, for the entrepreneurs, for medium-sized entrepreneurs, and for the employees of those companies to get more decent salaries. So you can also solve the problem of inequality by equalizing the market. And this is why the decentralized finance is crucial. Because in, now let's proceed to the actual mechanics of how do you enable this. In order to enable the liquidity for small companies, in order for their, uh, uh, for their securities to be actually traded, you need two things. Firstly, you need the creation of trading infrastructure, the access to the market to be as cheap as possible. Secondly, you need to create the interest from investors. Because if you don't have interest from investors who would be trading those assets, you don't have liquidity even if you have the technical possibility. So how does decentralized finance solve these two issues? Let's firstly speak about the cost. So the conventional cost of IPO is very high. If you're speaking about the US, it's millions of dollars. So this is definitely very not accessible. As for the in DeFi, you get unique solutions that allow you to create liquidity on the technical level much cheaper and that are available for any company. What I'm speaking about is the possibility to issue your tokenized securities, your tokenized shares in the form of tokens and then list them on uh, DEXs. So you can literally, if you're very small, you can create liquidity pool and deposit $100 and the corresponding amount of your tokens or $1,000 of your tokens into the pool plus pay a small fee for the creation of the actual pool. And now you have the liquidity. So, so literally for a few hundred or a few thousand dollars, you are now able on the, from the technical perspective to access liquidity and create the technical ability for your tokens to be traded. Currently, the existing solutions for, for decentralized exchanges such as Uniswap or others are not compliant with security law, but there is in the last couple of months, there is a set of uh, many solutions coming to the market that make it possible in the compliant way, including the digital security swap, which we at Stobox are developing in order to really create the liquidity for our existing clients and for many, many other potential clients. So this is now becoming possible in the compliant field and at very affordable rates compared to what IPO actually costs. So this is one piece of the puzzle. There are obviously other pieces that are necessary to make it more feasible, such as more, uh, that is cheaper reporting tools so that you are able to, to supply the current public information to your investors who are trading. And this is also becoming more available. Now, there is a second part of the liquidity puzzle, which is actually having investors and getting those investors to trade your tokens. And this is where DeFi also uh, helps by incentivizing speculators and providing investors to earn nice returns and do something even when, with relatively early stage tokens of small companies. Ex uh, a prime example of that is uh, liquidity farming. When you as a company could create an incentive for basically anybody to support and to provide you with liquidity by offering liquidity farming rewards. You can also provide uh, additional opportunities in the form of staking program. You can also list, uh, you can also allow uh, borrowing your token or uh, or borrowing against your token in a lending protocol, which in turn enables, for example, short selling, which attracts a new way of potential speculators interested in the new opportunities that are open up with your token. So when your security is transformed into a token, it can be plugged into a huge number of infrastructure such as the staking, the liquidity farming, the lending protocols that allow to do different creative things and therefore incentivize investors to create the liquidity for your token. And this is what drives capital to smaller businesses instead of driving them into big inefficient corporates. And last thing I would like to reflect is who will be the customers who actually, who would be those investors who create the liquidity? And I believe this will be actually the customers of those businesses, the local communities that fund them. So instead of funding some distant businesses, you would be funding the haircut shop that you recently visited and that offered you a great service, whose founder you know because you live in the same community. So instead of giving your money to 
mutual fund to index one and therefore is wasting money on another layer of intermediaries you would be giving this to businesses you know and therefore even the allocation of capital becomes more efficient so uh, my time is over and i will summarize by saying that there is currently huge discrepancy in how capital in huge inequality in how capital is distribution distributed in very inefficient uh, uh, areas of the economy and decentralized finance by unlocking liquidity at a very cheap cost and by creating incentives for investors to trade and speculate allows to democratize access to capital markets and therefore make our economy dramatically more efficient and i was and i am happy if it inspired you to try tokenizing your assets yourself and accessing those capital markets Thank you very much, Boris. That was great. And I like that you were keeping your eye on the clock. Very respectful of people's time. It's hard to keep things moving. Uh, we're going to take a 30-second break. Oh, thanks, Mark. Uh, we're going to take a 30-second break, and then we'll bring up our next speaker. Oh, by Thank the way, everybody, you. if you want to keep in touch with Boris, make sure he's going to uh, chat with you in the live chat, and you can find all of his contact info and connect. So please make sure you take I advantage. Contact. I will leave the contact info in the chat. Thank you.